And Pat, it's an honor to introduce you as the head coach of the Louisville men's basketball program. Dr. Schatzel, thank you, uh, both of you. Those presentations, I, I'm, I, you mentioned my energy. My mentor, Skip Prosser, used to describe me as making coffee nervous. <laughs> but when somebody gets up there and delivers an address the way you did, man, my, my foot started bouncing fast, and I was juiced up and ready to go uh, play a game. I, coaches don't like turnovers, right? Whether it's football, basketball, turnovers are a bad thing. Josh picked me up on an aircraft this morning in Charleston, South Carolina, about 1027, and uh, committed my first turnover, and hopefully it'll be the last for the day. I walk up to him, and I'm talking my shirt had the slightest, I'm talking the slightest tint of blue. <laughs> and he goes, how far is your house from here? <laughs> Man, look at this. Look at this. Look at the passion that this fan base has. And Dr. Schatzel said it the right way. Uh, and I don't think I can articulate it the way you do, but one of the most historic, tradition-rich programs in the history of college basketball. And you just feel it. You step off that airplane. You walk down the street. Cardinal, you know, Cardinal Nation, Card Nation is everywhere. I have this recurring dream, okay? And a couple of the speeches I've given in my life I've talked about this, but it happened again last night, and I got a great night's sleep. He offered me the job. Obviously, the board of trustees had to approve it, but I felt really good. Last couple nights, I didn't sleep really well. I wanted that call. I wanted to be here bad. But when I fell asleep, that dream came back. And good news, I was at the pearly gates. That's a good deal. I walk in. St. Peter meets me. He goes, welcome. I go, awesome, man. I, this is awesome. The ultimate, I'm here. He goes, let me show you around. We walk down the street. Start showing me a few neighborhoods, and there's a house out in the diff distance, and it has kind of a red and then a navy blue tint and kind of a Jayhawk down there on the door. And he goes, man, that's where Bill Self lives. Walk down a little bit further, and there's a cul-de-sac, kind of two houses on the end of that deal, and there's a maize blue one, and there's a dark navy one, and... He says, yep, that's Scott Drew and Dusty May. They, they live there. Like, it's ironic, but that, that's cool. That's cool. So we walk down further and further and further, and we come to this big deal. I'm talking impressive, big, big crib, manicured. Bentley, it's blue, it's got a UK on it, he goes, that's where Coach Cal lives, good for him, it's cool, we go farther down, and I'm talking, whoo, out in the distance, the moonlight's hitting it perfect at dusk, the biggest deal you've ever seen, and it is a stinking wow, and there's red all over that deal. And there's a big cardinal on it. And I'm like, St. Peter, that's me? He goes, no. I go, Danny Crum? No. Rick Patino? He said, son, that's where God lives. I'll try to be brief with this and we'll get the questions. Who is Pat Kelsey? Try to keep my life simple. There's a quote I believe in that says, true genius is the result of an uncluttered mind. Try to keep it simple. You fundraisers out there, I'm pretty good at fundraising, but I can't golf. 
like to draw and paint, stuff like that, but I'm about three things, my faith, my family, and Louisville basketball. My faith is my center, my strength. God is great. The opportunity that I have here today is 100% all God. Family. Family. If I were you, I'd buy stock in the Louisville bookstore because the amount of gear that's going to be bought by the Kelsey family Coming down from Cincinnati, my mom's one of ten, my dad's one of nine, I have 52 first cousins, and they're all kind of in that I-275 loop and pretty darn close to the Yum Center. My foremost prized possessions in the world, my beautiful Ruthie, my gorgeous Caroline, my best buddy, Johnny Ballgame. You're going to ask some questions about recruiting and all that stuff. You want to know if I can recruit? Meet my wife, Lisa. <laughs> I'm just praying that she doesn't hit the transfer portal. <laughs> the good news, I was her third choice, and that worked out really well, so I feel really good. Former players, there's too many out there to name. I googled top 50 players in the history of Louisville basketball and I almost fell down. It's a wow, it's a who's who. You kidding me? I'm going to miss many of them, so I'm not going to name one. You could go on and on and on and on. This is your program. This is your program. You don't ever have to call, you never have to ask, you want to come to practice, you just show up. This is your program. You built this. You put banners up in the rafters. I'm lucky to be the steward right now and lead this thing into the next era, but this is your program. I'm not going to name all of them, but I'm going to name one, Kenny Payne. Kenny Payne. Obviously didn't work out the way we wanted it, but he is a major, major, major part of Card Nation. And he is welcome back here like everybody else. He's a world-class human being. I don't know him well, but I know a ton of people that know him. And, um, and we're really proud of who he is and that he's a cardinal. Former coaches. I can't name them all, but I mentioned a couple in my story before. I mean, it, 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 I, almost, I can't believe it. I'm going to grace the same sidelines, maybe a different building, as the great Denny Crum and the great Rick Pitino. Are you kidding me? What's my philosophy? You know, we don't have enough time to go into all that, but you can simplify it. And it boils down to a couple things. One, culture eats strategy for lunch. Culture eats strategy for lunch. Like, you better have a strategy. You better have an offensive philosophy. I have one I really believe in. It's been successful. Defensively, I have one. It's been very, very successful. Recruiting, we have a philosophy that we believe in, and metrics that we study, and intangibles that we evaluate. And all those strategies are great. How you guard your pick and roll, set play team, pressing team, half court team, there's a bunch of them. But it pales in comparison to the strength and the belief and the buy-in of your culture. We say, we call it 25 strong. And you're one of them. Who are you? Our fan base. You make us great. You're one of our major, major, major strengths. And we need you to bring it and be the best fan base in America. Hey, I get it. Very, very knowledgeable, very opinionated, and that's what I signed up for. Bring it. But I'm telling you, we need you on the ship. So let's go. The 25 includes the walk-on point guard, the starting point guard, the head coach, the student manager, the director of basketball operations, the strength coach, the academic advisor. There might be more than 25 
but that's significant because we want to live in the top 25, compete for ACC championships, and compete to hang banners in national championships. All 25 people, no role, no job is more or less important than anybody else. But do your job like the best in the country. Do your job with excellence every single day. That's at the heart of our culture. On floor, our cultural blueprint contains three things. Relentless effort, competitive excellence, and the power of the unit. Competitive excellence is going as hard as you can every time A to B for about 46 and a half seconds. That's the average time between whistles in a game, our games. What do we achieve by that? We're tougher, toughness. We're tougher than any situation our opponent will face. Two, competitive excellence. That's every rep's a game rep. That's doing your job to the best of your ability every single time. What do we achieve by that? You're ready when your name's called. When the lights are the brightest, when the moment's the biggest, you're ready for that moment because you had excellence in everything you do. Three, power the unit. Power of the unit is the uncommon commitment to the guy next to you. It's not my points. It's not my rebounds. It's not my scout. It's not my recruit. It's us. It's being so motivated, not only to be a professional basketball player, it's great, we all have personal ambitions and goals, but it can't supersede the commitment to the guy next to you. Power of the unit. It's based on the most powerful force in the universe, love. Love. You say that's corny, we're a love program. I love my players and I tell them that every single day. I'm sure you have, have questions, that's what a press conference is, so I'm probably doing a little bit more talking than I should, but I wanna finish with a couple thank yous. My mentor, Skip Prosser, taught me a whole lot. The thing I recite to our players every day, and if they forget everything about playing for me, they remember this, never delay gratitude. Never delay gratitude. Thank you, being appreciative. I'm so blessed to be here. His belief in me, the faith that it took, the belief to pull the trigger on this guy, thank you, I won't let you down. Dr. Schatzel, I won't let you down. I wanna thank the College of Charleston I want to thank the city of Charleston. It's been home. It's a special place to me and it's a special place to my family. Taking three, two teenage girls out of high school. It's not easy. That place was home. My athletic director, Matt Roberts, he's a stud. It's a big reason why we build championships. I thank him, I thank Dr. Shu. I thank the administration there. I thank the city of Charleston. The Board of Trustees for believing in me and having trust and faith in Matt's, uh, sorry, Josh's decision. That's my old athletic director. Second turnover. You got to have a two to one assist to turnover ratio, so I'll work on it. Eula Board, thank you for all you do and your support and your belief in me. The alumni, right? The fans. The city of Louisville, what a special place this is. I grew up 75 miles north of here. This place has identity. It has a culture. It has uh, pride. Are we the South? Are we the Midwest? Hey, we're both. We're both. I got an education on the airplane, on bourbon. <laughs> I know it's 51% corn. If it ain't from Kentucky, it ain't bourbon. Pardon my bad English, Dr. Schatzel. In conclusion, never delay gratitude. Thank you. I'm so excited to get started. You know, I tell our players all the time, no matter what's going on, preseason, injury occurs, you lose a game. Fellas, the one thing you don't have to worry about is us being really, really good. I can't wait to get started. So blessed to be the head coach here. L's up. Go Cards.
All right, thank you, Coach. We'll open it up to questions from the media. Uh, for Coach Kelsey and Josh, if you have a question, uh, media members, please raise your hand. One of our staffers will bring it to you. Just please state your name and your affiliation. Hey, uh, Coach Kelsey, uh, Kent Taylor, WLKY TV. This fan base, this, this basketball program has been through a lot in the last 15 years, uh, and we're coming off of you know, the, the two historically worst seasons in the history of it. How do you turn it around and, and, and get everybody back even before, because it's you know, six, seven months before you're going to be able to play a game. You can do it by winning, but how do you win in the next six or seven months? Real quick, we have a formula in our program, and I live my life by it, and our players I told it to those guys earlier, E plus R equals O. E are events and circumstances that you can't do anything about. The O is the outcome that you want to achieve. Can't do anything really about that. You can do something about the next thing. That's your response, right? So you ask, how are we going to go about it? The next thing we do, the next recruiting meeting, the next repetition in the weight room, the next individual workout, the next thing that we do is the most important thing in the history of our program. And we're going to be great at that. And then we're going to be great at the next thing. And then we're going to be great at the next thing. And by having excellence in that daily process, I'm a strong believer, and we have proof that the results end up taking care of themselves. What I need is faith from you guys. Hang with us. That's my answer. Next thing. Pat, Ken Spencer, WHAS 11, back here, uh, phone up. This process was long. Your name was attached to this process for, for quite a long time. I don't know when the first time you, you spoke to Josh was, but what, what kept you in it? A lot of coaches would have maybe said, man, that, that's not for me, but, but you stayed in it to the very end. I expressed to Josh that I would, I'd run there. It's, one, it's the best job in the United States of America. I'd run there. He knew how bad I wanted it. You know, I, I put blinders on and I kept working for the people that signed my paychecks and that's the College of Charleston. Right, we recruited our butt off and loved up on our players and prepared for next season. Um, but I was ready when my name's called. Competitive excellence. I think I've been preparing for that interview my entire life. This is the ultimate job. This is the peak and pinnacle of my profession. <laughs> and I, I need to say something else because I did talk about family. It is hard on teenagers to leave their friends and to leave their high school, you know, and there are questions sometimes like, well, Dad, we're really happy where we're at. You talk about a supportive family and a supportive wife, um, and they said, we're wind at your back, let's go. It won't be easy as the transition occurs, um, but we did this thing together and worked our butt off together. You know, it's, it's not my championships, and it's not my Coach of the Year awards, it's us. It's my family that supports, at least it takes care of stuff at home. The caliber of individuals that my children are 100% because of the job she does, right? I work my butt off, I'm not home very much, try to have quality over quantity, but um, that, that's, you know, it's us. It's, it's Coach of the Year, Staff of the Year, right? And, um, you know, when he made that call, I was ready, and. When, when, when he, he kind of was funny, he's, a, he's brilliant. Like, I think I have to add my SAT score times two to get to Josh. He's like crazy smart. And we're different. And I really think, you know, that's, that's, that's why we really, really hit it off. Uh, his yang is my yang, so to speak. And I'm, as you can tell, maybe a little bit more of a, of a showman, I guess you could say. And I would have built up the commitment and the ask to a boom, 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 bam, and then I stand up and cheer and fist pump like we do when a kid commits to us and hug. And, and he was offering me the job, but I had to stop him and go, are you offering me the job? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, yes, and I went crazy. It was awesome, but you got you to gotta be who you are, and he's an unbelievable version of himself. My saying is, uh, there was a civil rights leader named France A. Davis that gave this speech at University of Utah Convocation. And again, it's another thing I live my life by. He said his mother taught him growing up uh, in, in rural Georgia this saying, be who you is and not who you ain't, because if you ain't who you is, you is who you ain't. Be true to yourself. <laughs> Billy Shakespeare said it better, to thine own self be true. <laughs> 
Pat, Jody Dillon, Cardinal Authority, right here, Stay straight back. You've talked to a lot, of, a lot of people. You've been around a lot of people. Who did you talk to the last few days? Anybody that gave you any advice? And what, I know what Skip meant to you. What would he say to you right now? Eddie DeCellis, who's the head coach of the United States Naval Academy, was best friends with Skip Prosser. Eddie is, was at Penn State, crushed it there, went to multiple NCAA tournaments, East Tennessee State. He's at one of the toughest jobs in the country at the Naval Academy. He is one of the people that picked up the mantle uh, in terms of mentorship that Skip provided for me after he passed away. Another one is a legendary high school coach in the city of Cincinnati from Elder High School sitting in the stands today that was in my wedding, and I love him like a brother, Coach Joe Schoenfeld, who's right there. Um, but, you know, guys like that, my wife Lisa, Eddie DeCellis, and Coach DeCellis sent me a text today, and he, he, this is something Skip would say, and you'd have to know him, but he texted me and he put it in quotes, and I could hear Skip saying it, and he goes, hey, hey, E.D., how about our guy, Kels? How about our guy, Kel? So I think he's looking down here smiling today. Coach, uh, C.D. Kaplan from the Card Chronicle. Um, in the whirlwind of the last 48 hours, have you had a chance to review the play of any of the players who are on the current roster? And if so, have you been able to identify any that you would like to re-recruit out of the portal to stay, and if so, have you had a chance yet to reach out to them, or what plans do you have to do so? Yes, so uh, maybe an hour and a half ago, I had a chance to meet the team and to address them, kind of lay out uh, what Coach Kelsey's all about, some of the things I talked about here. Um, over the last, I don't know what it is, 30 hours or something since you offered me the job, probably heard this expression before, I feel like I've been drinking out of a fire hose with a straw. Uh, with all the stuff coming at us, but you know, just like many of those young men that um, have entered the transfer portal, obviously to evaluate other opportunities and what potentially could be better for them, whether it is potentially to be here at the University of Louisville or to go elsewhere, I'm kind of in that same process as well in terms of evaluating them. I have had a chance, started to, I got to jump into it even more, but um, whether it's calling around, talking to high school coaches and people that know them play you know really peeling away the onion to find out the type of people they are and what other people say about them and then obviously I'll have a chance to meet with them all one-on-one -on -one here over the next 72 hours or so so uh, you know in the transfer portal world obviously everything moves very fast so we're going to try to be really efficient with that with that process but I told them you know uh, whether it's some of the players that we had at Charleston it, it's a new era First of all, you can't take it personal when a player goes into the transfer portal. Before the transfer portal era, if you had four guys go into the transfer portal, people would say, what's going on? The ceiling's falling. It's just how it is now, you know? And I think kids have every right and every opportunity, just like a coach does. I just left the school, and a day later, I'm a head coach at the next school. I 100% think they have the same option and opportunity, especially when a new coach comes in that they don't know very well. Um, but they got a good taste of who Coach Kelsey was. PK is what a lot of the players call me back at Charleston. It was about a 20-minute session where it was like, okay, this is, this is who this, this guy is because I'm going to be who I am. So, but great question. That's going to go on over the next several days. Coach Corey here at Bosmer Media. When you're recruiting a student athlete, how important to you is it to get their parent to believe in you? Say it again. How, much, how important is it what? When you're recruiting a student Correct. athlete, how important to you is it to get their parents to believe in you? Oh, it's everything. You got to start with the mom. <laughs> mom. Mom, mom, mom. Mom. I'm, I'm pretty good with recruiting moms, which is, leads to a lot of recruiting success. But no, mom and dad, obviously. I mean, I haven't mentioned it, but um, I'm biased, obviously, but I think I have the greatest parents and mom and dad in the history of civilization, and they're here today. They have 23 grandchildren, 24, 24 grandchildren, and they got all these kids playing sports all over the place every day. They're 70, mid-70s, whatever. They're at every game. Oh, by the way, they're at the games in Charleston. So, um, yeah, <laughs> you know, that, that, that child, that, that, not child, I mean, they're grown men, but those parents, that player, is their most prized possession in the world. You know, and I promised them, I looked the parents in the eye, and I'm going to love him. It's tough love. 
the standard's the standard and we will not bend, but players that are championship players and that are about the right things, they crave discipline. They crave it. Um, but conveying to parents that not only are you going to make their game better and improve their pick and roll reads and turn their body into an NBA body, your son's going to get taken care of. My wife, Lisa, knows the favorite dish of every one of our players we've ever coached and the favorite dessert. And on their birthday, they get it, right? So, um, yeah. The cool thing about this is, and let's be real, in a lot of ways, where we're at in college athletics is very similar to professional athletics. But at this level, collegiately, even though it is inched toward more professional, you can still move the needle in the heart of a kid and make him better. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, our chief want in life is someone who can make us do what we can. Our chief want in life is someone who can make us do what we can. That's what great teachers do. I'm not saying a great teacher, but that, that, I live by that. What's your potential? I'm getting you there. It's going to take pushing. If you're not down with that, you can't play here. Hey, Pat, uh, back here. Uh, Brooks Holden uh, with the Courier Journal. I'm just... Um, I'm just wondering on um, what do you think your uh, timeline will be, um, you know, in terms of building a staff, um, and do you foresee uh, many people uh, from Charleston uh, coming here with you? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I mentioned Coach of the Year Award, Staff of the Year. Uh, my staff is magnificent. You talk about guys that buy into the 25 strong, that are as loyal as the days long, that are skilled in the schematics and teaching of coaching of bas basketball and X's O's and player development, their ability to do relationship, build rapport, love on players, recruit, sell, uh, and then obviously the guys in the administrative roles, they, they, they eat and sleep and drink at what they do. <laughs> That's why we win. The culture is a machine behind the scenes. And um, it, it, uh, yes. So as much those guys are, are coming here, obviously in different situations, uh, you know, I think the energy bus talks about getting the right people in the right seats on the bus. Um, there, you know, there might be which guys here, which guys here. We're looking on at bringing uh, potentially someone or a couple from the outside for certain aspects, um, you know, and, and all that is, is in the process of being, of being decided right now. But uh, those guys are why we win. You know, I, I'm, I'm the guy that gets the press conference and, 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 the, and the contract and all that stuff, but it, it's, you don't have to be the smartest one in the room in business. You don't. I mean, there's a lot of guys out here who are much smarter in business than me. Larry's looking right at me. Where's Rick and all you guys? You don't have to be the smartest in the room, but you better have the smartest room. Staff. Really, really, really important. Hey, Tyler Griever from WDRB right up here. I actually have one for, for Josh for, for a moment. Josh, in the, in the process, you described that it was long and it took a minute. Pat, as a guy himself, as when did you see him as the choice, not a choice in this process? So I back up for a couple of years. Uh, the first time uh, Pat and I had a conversation was when Winthrop came here when we hosted that, uh, those games around the bubble. I don't know if anybody remembers that. I don't know if anybody could even attend those games. Uh, I vaguely remember we were waiting on some test results. Uh, there was something uh, that we were waiting on and just happened to spend about 30 minutes uh, in a locker room just chatting with him and was just impressed with that conversation. And fast forward to the NCAA tournament uh, in the bubble in Indy and first round game against... Villanova. Villanova. And so went up there and watched that game. And uh, I, I specifically remember Jay saying, uh, man, I didn't really know a lot about that team or that coach, but those guys are good. And they play hard, and they know exactly what they're doing. And so that was a precursor up to uh, the first conversation we had, I believe, was the Friday uh, before Selection Sunday. And uh, I'll tell you this, this guy, while he was at Charleston, wasn't very worried about this job because he was getting his guys ready for the NCAA tournament. And so you have to navigate some of that 
And uh, so I'm trying to uh, make sure that we're doing this as expeditiously as we can. And, and he's focused on his guys. And so uh, as the search unfolded, that's when we continued to have more conversations and got to where we are today. Question for Pat. Dusty Baker, Wave News. Pat, uh, obviously this is a... Did yeah, you just say Dusty Baker? Dusty Baker, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look the same, right? I'm the same guy, basically. <laughs> it's good to see you again. I'm a huge Reds fan. Is, I don't know if anybody... Happy opening day. Yeah. Happy opening What's day. What's the score? Uh, I haven't looked yet. I'll look for you. Sorry. Sorry. I think it just, start, it just started, actually. So we'll give that to you in a little bit. Uh, obviously... This is a winning program. You have winning coaches here. Jeff Brom comes over and wins immediately. Jeff Walls does what he does with the basketball program with the women. Danny Busboom Kelly, Dan McDonald. I mean, the list goes on and on. This is a program that's used to winning. So with the timeline, when should this program expect for this team to win? I mean, if you don't plan on winning, don't put your shoes on. Like, I don't I, – I, no, no offense, I'm not trying to – I mean, I, I'm just being honest, like, that's how I'm wired. It may not be the right thing to say at a press conference and you're trying to build this thing and they won 12 games over the last two years. I don't know how to, I don't know how to play any other way. And I'm glad you mentioned uh, that all-star cast of coaches that you just mentioned, world class. Um, this athletic department and the caliber of coaches and teams and organizations and in a lot of ways, the resources that are put forward, but the quality of leaders that they are, sensational. And it is very, very, very important to me, and it's hard in the last 24 hours to do this, my relationship with them is very, very important to me. Right? We're in this thing together. We pick each other up after tough losses. We celebrate big wins. Um, but having a strong rapport with the other coaches in the athletic department, and in the athletic department as, as a whole, is important, and I'm excited about reaching out to all them. But, you know, again, we're, we're, it's a very, very important six weeks, you know, in terms of roster management, talent acquisition, recruiting, and um, putting the, getting the roster put together. And then when the players all report for the first time all together uh, for the first session of summer school, it's, you know, that outcome is going to take care of itself if we're the best in the country at the next thing we do. So... 362 Div Division One teams in the country, maybe it's 352, I can't remember. Um, and we, we constantly talk about the 1%, trying to be in the 1%. And that's not always, always the most talented team, but it's the best team. Sometimes it's always, not always about the best player, it's about the right players, right? And um, yeah, so let's, let's win this next thing we do. Hey, Pat, over here to your right. Dominique, I, is it your left or your right? I'm not good. Yeah. Yeah. Dominique Yates, WLKY, yeah, here in Louisville. Yeah, I'm not good at that either. Um, I've, we've seen videos of you, you know, hanging on rims at practice, diving over shoes, just different things of that nature. Where did that motivation and just that energy come from, and how much are you having that added motivation to you kind of alluded to getting a job of this status? Yeah, you know, I just, just say I'm who I am, first of all. I got the short end of the stick in handsomeness, hair, probably intelligence, and a lot of things, but for whatever reason, the Lord blessed me in great abundance with energy. And, um, you know, there is, there is a turnoff switch, believe it or not. If I go home and I'm that same way at home, unfortunately for my wife, Johnny's got my same energy. So, uh, but yeah, you know, that's it's just me having fun. If, if you're not having fun at what you do, why are you doing it, right? Find what you're passionate about and, and do it with everything you got. Do it with a smile on your face. Like, we're a smile on your face program. I wrote a book by Lou Holtz a long time ago, and Bobby Bowden went and visited him at Notre Dame. And they were like arch rivals, but they ended up being good friends, and they're walking around the um, Notre Dame football facility, and everybody's, hey, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Smile on your face. How you doing? And finally stopped him, and he goes, Lou, what, what's going on? Like, why is everybody in this organization happy to be here, smile? So he goes, man, that's real easy, because if you're not that way, you got to go, right? So, um, but yeah. Pat, over here. Uh, Mason Hordisky, WHAS 11. You mentioned the magnitude of what this job is. I mean, Josh said it plain and simple, that this is the lifeblood of not just the school, the city. That can be intimidating to a lot of people. 
what, I guess, excited you about the magnitude of it? Because if this is God's house, how do you make yourself at home? Yeah, I mean, it's, you, you, I'm staying at the podium, was just named the head coach, where expectations, because tradition says it, is ultimately getting to Final Fours and competing for national championships, right? That's the pinnacle. That's the highest level. It doesn't get any higher than this. And then to walk around and see these facilities, oh, my goodness, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, obviously, there's unbelievable support and leadership from an administration standpoint. It's as rabid and excited or, or excited, right, as a fan base as you're going to find anywhere. Um, it's the highest level with high expectations. And i um, fortunate to be here. I'm excited to get started. Pat, Jody again here in the middle. You, you mentioned NIL. Josh talked about it, which you had at Charleston, a good situation for there. How do you deal with it? What's kind of your plan with it in, in can you speak a little to the 502 circle yet? Have you talked to... Yeah, a little bit. Uh, we haven't, um, just because of everything going on, we've had a lot of discussions and talked uh, here and there. You know, uh, Josh said it, you know, when NIL really started to take hold and there was, at our level, at the level we were at, at Charleston and some of the competition, and I'm not saying anybody else didn't have this approach, but this was ours. We weren't going to, woe is me, what we call BCD, blame, complain, defend, oh man, this is the, no, we ran at it. And we said, we're gonna use this as a catalyst to make it an advantage and uh, use it to springboard our program to more championships and NCAA tournaments. You have to, because if, if you're gonna woe is me and you're gonna fight it, and this is that you need to do something else. So my same approach here, obviously this athletic department, this administration is unbelievably forward thinking, creative, uh, getting out of, in front of all of it and have done a great job uh, building that infrastructure. And I'm excited about staying, getting involved and in, in, in even pushing it higher. Pat, uh, Kent Taylor again from WLKY TV here next to Jody. Well, relationships are obviously a, a big part of what you do. And when you, you mentioned it's not easy, so it's going to be hard. But when you see like, I mean, there's somebody here who you coached when he was a freshman in high school at Elder. You see him here. Um, how does that kind of hit you to see that, you know, people are, are with you for, you know, 30 years? I mean, it's, it's love. It's what my household was built on. I mean, it's the greatest gift. Two things that my parents taught me that I hope I can pass on to my children. One is the ultimate belief in me. The ultimate belief. I keep telling these dumb stories, but I always – driving home from baseball practice at a, at a select team when I was like nine years old and really good players there thought I was pretty good and my dad takes me to it. we get in the car we're driving away and I, I turn to him and I say dad you how about that kid Brian Cannon at shortstop <sighs> that dude's good man like and his name Brian Cannon that sounds like a major league baseball name and he stopped the car and he put it in park and he looked at me he goes son you can be a major league baseball. You can do anything you set your mind to. Fast forward about 40 years. I'm standing in front of you right now as the head coach at the University of Louisville because of the faith and the belief that my father poured into me. Second is love. It's tough love. My dad is a former Marine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but love, and that's love. I have my siblings sitting out here in front of me right now, my nieces and nephews, my, my niece Millie, who's one of the nastiest, toughest soccer players in America, who's going to the College of Charleston, and I'm moving out of town, Mildred. I'm so sorry, girl. I love you. Family, it's love. Coach, back here, uh, Lachlan McLean, Spectrum News, right here. You're going to be recruiting in different waters than you have in the past, whether it's guys in the portal or coming out of high school. And to some extent, they're going to have to take a chance on you because you've not coached at this level. What do you tell them to make them believe? Well, I have. You know, my, I was at Wake Forest in the ACC for eight years, and we won multiple ACC championships and uh, recruited multiple McDonald's All-Americans. I was involved in the recruitment of, of Chris Paul. I'm not saying I was the lead recruiter, but I was involved in that and um, was at Xavier as associate head coach and we we're nationally ranked. I mean, that's the highest level. Um, you know, when Coach Prosser hired me as the assistant coach at Wake Forest in 2005, I had been director of basketball operations for three years. 
And I had just left Coach Schoenfeld's coaching staff at Elder High School where I was the freshman basketball coach. I didn't give, even get to sit on the varsity bench. He sent me scouting on Friday nights. That's how low I was on the totem pole. And I'm selling cars for my father at the same time to pay the bills. I knew I wanted to get into coaching. It's hard, right? Hard to get your foot in the door and skip open the door a little bit. And I jumped in and I felt like I did a pretty good job. But you know what my job was the first three years as director of basketball operations? It was making sure the Gatorades were on the, on the bus afterwards ice cold and the napkins were folded the right way and the pizza was piping hot. A few years later, an assistant coaching job opens on his staff in the ACC at Wake Forest. I was selling cars, and I was a freshman basketball coach, and I was doing pizzas. And there was a line about seven miles long of people that were more qualified than me to become an assistant coach in the ACC. That's Duke, that's North Carolina, now that's Louisville, that's that, 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 that. And this is how special he was. I don't know, he just saw something. He saw something in me. And when that spot opened up, he called me into his office without making one other call. And he said, Kels, are you ready? And I said, heck yeah. And I walked out and I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so let's go. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. That Hall of Famer there, Hall of Famer there, national championship there, national championship there. I worked my whole life for this. Whatever Malcolm Gladwell says, 10,000 hours, I mean, you multiply that times four. You know, here we go. Let's get after it. Back here, Tim Sullivan, Leo Weekly. Two part question. One, um, I grew up reading you in uh, Cincinnati Inquirer when I was little. You have my condolences. <laughs> uh, can you drill it down a little deeper on the, the NIL landscape, where Louisville is competitively, how much money you have to spend, and uh, whether, uh, whether that needs to be increased significantly to be nationally competitive? Second part is you have four uh, juniors who are your leading scorers at Charleston. How many of them, if any, are likely to come here? Can't answer that. We're re recruiting the transfer portal and evaluating all the prospects that are in there at this point once they go in. You know, it doesn't matter where they played. It's what's the right fit for us and what's the right fit for them. Um, those young men, everyone in that locker room uh, that I had to have a really tough meeting with yesterday are kids that I love, helped us cut down nets, hang banners, very, very good players. And, uh, and again, like, as soon as this press conference over, you know, we got to speed this thing up. I got to get to work. You know what I mean? Um, in terms of your other question, we always push. There is never a, enough, right? I mean, you're always going to push, and I haven't had a chance to, to get involved as much and meet a lot of people. Like he said, he gave me eight really important names last night and contacts, and then I asked for 20 of them, so you're always going to push. In terms of the exact details of all that, the same question that he asked, um, those are talks and those are discussions that uh, as we move forward here over the next 24 hours, 48 hours, I'll know a lot, you know, a lot more about. Coach, Corey again, Bosworth Media. What do you look for in an assistant coach when adding to your staff? Well, first of all, you know, everybody says you need uh, a, a small guy, a tall guy, West Coast guy, East Coast guy, European guy, this guy. First of all, it starts with good guys. It starts with character. It starts with people that can teach and that can coach. Obviously, it starts with that. Um, obviously, you want assistant coaches that are very well-rounded. You want assistant coaches that aspire to be standing at the podium that I am right now. You want them to think like head coaches with every decision they make. My dad's a car dealer in, in, in uh, Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Uh, Kelsey Chevrolet from our family to yours. They, right now we got low rates and it, I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, I have actually lost track and I start selling cars. What the heck was I saying? What's that? So tell me again your question. I'm yeah, what do you look for? So. Um, you know, he always says people that, that work in his dealership, act like it's your dealership, act like it's your money. So that, 
with the, that, that are obviously very organized, very persistent, able to communicate well, well connected, uh, know how to build relationships, uh, give great counsel to the head coach, trust, loyalty. I'm sorry I got passionate with that because I don't think there's anything more important. Um, so there's a few things I look for. Pat over here, C.L. Brown with the Courier Journal. Um, Kenny Payne used the word broken to describe the state of the program when he, when he took over. How would you summarize where this program is day one, hour one of you being a head coach? Ready? Ready to rock? Let's go. I mean, you, you can't, ready, let's go. What happens in the past, what's happened out in the future, we all know where we want to go. Everybody in this room knows where we want to go, right? It's about getting to work and getting after it, the next thing. We have time for three more questions for Coach Kelsey and Josh. I think we have those lined up. Coach Kendrick Hask is Wave Louisville back here. Um, Chris Mack tweeted out that you're going to be a great fit here at University of Louisville. What is your relationship like with him, and what has he told you about what to expect here? At this yeah, point? obviously, you know, Chris and I go way back. Right? We're both from uh, Cincinnati and, and worked under Coach Prosser. Um, you know, and, and obviously, as somebody that has stood at this podium and, and sat in that seat, he's you know, very informed and very knowledgeable about everything. So um, you know, picking his brain, that's what coaches do. I mean, there, there's, even in coaching, I mean, Coach, you know, he's innovative as heck, man. Like they're running these new options, breed options, all this stuff. But most stuff in coaching is stolen, right, or borrowed or all that stuff. So we, we, uh, we all ask, we call, and especially head coaches, man. Like that seat's lonely. Assistants, they think they know everything, <laughs> right? And that six inches from where the assistant sits to where I sit is like six miles. But they got all the answers, you know, when you got to start making the decisions, it's a little bit of a different deal. So, yeah, I touched base with him, and, uh, you know, so it was, it was very helpful and informative. I've known him for a long, long time. Jeff Spalding, Cardinal Sports. What can we expect uh, your identity to be on the offensive and defensive side of the ball? Yeah, so uh, there's a guy named Nick Nurse, who I think is one of the most innovative basketball thinkers um, of modern basketball. He's the head coach of the Philadelphia 76ers. He, um, by dumb luck, walked to my basketball office at Winthrop eight years ago, and uh, his wife was a volleyball assistant. It was his fiance at the time. Walked in, he was an assistant in the NBA, asked if he could come to practice. I'm like, sure, who are you? I'm an assistant in the NBA. I was like, heck yeah. So he watches workouts, we do a lot of things, and then afterwards he start kind of introducing me to uh, modern basketball thought in terms of applying analytics to your offensive approach and they were way 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 ahead of the curve when they were doing it he was part of the Houston Rockets organization with Daryl Morey and those guys he was their G League coach and then he really started to put his own spin on things and he's just become a great resource and a treasure trove like his text messages my meetings with him I've gone and met with him in in the summers and um, so a lot of it is drawn from that um, you know, everybody, when they stand up in the co press conference, say, we're going to play an exciting style. We're going to play fast. We're going to do this. I mean, we, we, we're fast-paced. We're usually uh, in the top tier of college basketball in terms of a number of possessions in our game. Um, but a big part of our philosophy is, and this sounds really, really simple, but it's, it's true, the highest percentage shots in the game, we want the most of those. Right? And I'm not going to sit here and give out all my secrets to everybody out there. <laughs> But uh, there's a way that we generate those shots, um, and there's a certain type of player that we look for specifically from a metric standpoint that kind of fit what we do in a lot of different areas, position by position. But, um, and then it applies well to our system. Now, besides those metrics, as I said, there's five intangibles that we also evaluate. It doesn't matter how talented you are. It doesn't matter how this, but you, you gotta fit these things in terms of you know, stuff that you can't measure, one of them being toughness and I won't give you the rest of them because again we want to keep our secrets here <laughs> final question Mr. Tony KY Sports TV I'm curious uh, how much priority you give to uh, in-state recruiting considering how many players have uh, contributed yeah I mean I, I, I think 
In the transfer portal world, obviously, your recruiting is everywhere, right? Uh, first of all, um, we're a big hit where you ain't programmed to, where we look, uh, there's, there's a, like to have balance on our roster, right? So we, we uh, internationally recruit to a certain extent. We uh, recruit underclassmen, you know, the old school, the way it's supposed to be high school prospects, all that, and then obviously the transfer portal as well. And I think having a good mix of that is very, very important. Uh, there's a saying in coaching, and I think it's very, very valid today um, to win because of the transfer portal world. You have to get old and stay old, right? But my goodness, there is nothing, nothing, nothing more important than the grassroots relationships with the high school coaches in the greatest basketball state in the United States of America. All right. Well, thank you all so much for being here today. We'll see you in the Yum Center and go Cards. <laughs>